السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. I'm Ashraf Khater, professor of surgery at Mansoura University, and this is surgery for the medical students. And now we will speak about the melanoma. Melanoma as an example of malignant ulcer. Uh, speaking about the risk factors of melanoma, of course, the same uh, of the risk factors like xeroderma pigmentosa, albinism, and fair skin, sun exposure. Uh, special risk factors for the melanoma are the nevi present in the soil or in the palm, and giant nevi. Giant nevi is a nevus occupying a large area of the skin, like this photo. These are the giant nevi, or what we call dysplastic nevus syndrome. Dysplastic nevus syndrome, they are nevi by a hundreds of number. Uh, they are present in hundreds, like this photo. This is dangerous to develop melanoma. And uh, special two types, they are the junctional nevi and compound nevi. Junctional nevi, as we see in this microscopic photo, is the presence of melanin pigments in the junction between the epidermis and the dermis. Uh, actually, the normal nevi, they are present in the deep uh, part of the dermis, but junctional nevi, they are present in clusters in the junction between the epidermis and the dermis. They are called junctional nevi. And the compound nevi, they are intradermal nevi plus uh, junctional nevi. So, presence of junctional nevi is a risk factor for developing melanoma. These are the risk factors we know about the melanoma. Of course, the hereditary tendency plays an important role. The second item, what are the signs of malignant transformation of a benign nevus to melanoma? So, al muhimma awi, very important question. It is an oral question for you. What are the signs of malignant transformation of the benign nevus into melanoma? Of course, the most important is the rapid increase in size. Size shows rapid increase. Number two, darkness of the nevus. It was, for example, brownish. Now it is dark, dark brown. The third one is the border irregularity. It was regular border. Now it is more irregular border. Maybe loss of hair. If it was hairy, there is fall of hair. Or it is painful after being painless. Or there is induration of the base instead of being non-indurated base. The base of the uh, nevus was so soft, now it is indurated base. Or presence of an ulcer, ulceration or fissuring and ulceration of the nevus may indicate melanomatous transformation or appearance of nodal or distant metastasis, or fixity of the ulcer. It was mobile nevus, now it is fixed. So fixity means invasion of the underlines, or appearance of nodal or distant metastasis. All are the signs of malignant transformation, never to forget these signs. And now, what about the clinical types? We have nearly eight clinical types of melanoma. The first one is what we call lentigo melanoma maligna. It is the in situ form of melanoma. As we see in this photo, uh, it is so superficial, uh, blackish or deep brownish patch, and by microscope it is still in situ. It is called lentigo melanoma maligna. And then the superficial spreading melanoma. It is superficial type with no induration. And of course, it is still indolent. The deeper the invasion, the worse the prognosis and the more difficult in treatment. The third type, as we see, nodular melanoma. And the nodule, of course, can ulcerate into typical melanomatous ulcer. Nodular melanoma. Then, acral melanoma, which occurs in the digits. Acral melanoma. And then the subangual melanoma, which may be mistaken for subangual hematoma, it is called subangual melanoma. And then a very strange type, which is called amelanotic melanoma. It is a non-pigmented nodule, which can 
be diagnosed only by biopsy and immune staining for melanoma by S100 protein and other markers or immune stains of melanoma. It is amelanotic melanoma. And the mucosal melanoma, which occurs in the mucous membranes of the orifices, like the anus or the buccal cavity, or in the choroid, they are called mucosal melanomas. And lastly, the metastatic melanoma. Metastatic melanoma, either as we see in this photo, uh, satellites around the nodule, or what we call skin in transit. In transit means seedling of the malignant cells during the journey into the lymph nodes, producing deposits in the skin. They are called in transit. يعني أثناء ما هي ماشية تعمل ترانزيت وتعمل seedling into the skin. And of course, lastly, the nodal metastasis or distant metastasis. So they are eight types: lentigo melanoma maligna, superficial spreading melanoma, nodular melanoma, acral melanoma, subangual melanoma. A melanotic melanoma, mucosal melanoma, and lastly the metastatic melanoma. What about the prognosis of melanoma? As we know, melanoma, اللي هي سرطان الخلايا الملونة, is a very aggressive malignancy. But the most important two prognostic factors are the depth of invasion, depth of invasion, and presence of nodal or other metastasis. Again, the lymph node is very important in prognosis of melanoma. For the depth, there was uh, classifications made by Clark level and Breslau level. As we see in this photo, these are the Clark and Breslau levels, and the deeper the invasion, as we see, of course, the worse the prognosis. Other factors that may make the prognosis worse, if occurs in the scalp, if occurs in the mucous membrane, if occurs in young, especially women, young women or young females, if there is ulceration, if there is ulceration, and of course if there is metastasis either nodal or skin or distant metastasis. Then what about the staging of melanoma, the TNM simplified for you, TNM staging, again the T may be TIS, uh, which is lentigo melanoma maligna, maybe TX if uh, cannot be assessed, for example, excised, nodule or ulcer. Uh, TO, if there is nodal or distant metastasis without evident primary tumor, it is occult carcinoma. T1 and 2 and 3 and 4, if it is 1 millimeter or less, then T2 from 1 to 2 millimeters, T3 from 2 to 4 millimeters, and T4 beyond 4 millimeters. About the lymph node, maybe N0, N1 or 2 or 3, N1, just one lymph node, N2, from 1 to 3 lymph nodes, we mean 2 or 3 lymph nodes, and N3, usually more than 4 lymph nodes. About the M or metastasis, maybe M0 or M1, and the M1, can be divided into M1A or B or C. A includes the skin, subcutaneous tissue, and lymph node. B includes the lung, and C any other metastatic areas, either visceral or bony or what else. Uh, it is called M1C. M1A, skin, subcutaneous, and lymph node. B, lung, C, other areas of distant metastasis. About the investigations of melanoma as any malignancy, of course, we will take punch biopsy of the ulcer or the nodule to confirm the diagnosis. Local radiological investigations to assess the invasion of the surroundings, of course, and metastatic work up to search for distant metastasis anywhere. And nowadays, there is what we call bed scan, bed scan, which can assess bony or visceral metastasis, especially in this aggressive tumor. And what about the management? The best line of treatment of melanoma is surgery. If you can excise with good safety margin again, with good safety margin, wide local excision with a good safety margin, you can eradicate locally, not systemic, of course. How can you excise? Uh, according to the thickness or the level. If the thickness 
is one millimeter or less, just one centimeter is enough. If the thickness from one to four millimeters, two centimeters is enough. If the thickness is more than four millimeters, three centimeters is enough as an excision margin and all are uh, assured by the frozen section. What about the lymph node? If it is positive lymph node, do lymph node dissection. If it is negative lymph node, never to leave this patient. You must do at least sentinel lymph node biopsy to be sure of the negativity of the lymph node because very high incidence of occult nodal or microscopic nodal uh, metastasis. And for treatment of satellites and in transits, we may do what we call isolated limb perfusion. We occlude the vessels of the limb by special catheters and balloon and uh, rotate a circulation like the extracorporeal circulation with a hot or high temperatures using interferon and uh, some other immune therapy to uh, immerse the intransents and lymph nodes with the chemotherapy and interferon and other immunotherapy this is called isolated limb perfusion. It gives good results in these situations. And of course, the systemic chemotherapy, in the past, they uh, were using uh, some alkylating agents. Nowadays, uh, most of the therapy is interferon alpha based chemotherapeutic agents. Now we can summarize our talk about the risk factors of melanoma about the uh, signs of malignant transformation of a benign mole into melanoma, about the clinical types of melanoma, about the prognostic factors of melanoma and which types are worse than the others, about the TNM staging of melanoma, about the diagnosis of melanoma by biopsy of the lesion and uh, local investigations to assess the spread, local spread and the metastatic work up, and about the treatment of melanoma, either surgical with wide local excision and dealing with lymph nodes, and about the systemic management of the melanoma with interferon-based, interferon-alpha-based chemotherapy, and the problem of satellites and lymph nodes, which may be solved by what we call isolated limb perfusion. Wishing you the best of luck and much of success. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.